morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining class. I hope all of you had a good and refreshing weekend and ready to face another new week. You'll have a good weekend. All of you? Yes, no? Yes, ma'am. We had a yes. wonderful weekend. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Okay, so let's begin our class this morning. Uh, can one of you please lead us in prayer? Anyone? Can I ask Susan Nirmal to lead us in prayer, please? Okay, ma'am. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We come into your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this wonderful day you have given us, Lord Jesus. Help us and guide us and lead us, Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come in our midst and uh, open our minds and hearts to understand whatever our ma'am teaches us, Lord. Lord Jesus, thanks for uh, giving us a burden for the children and youth, Lord. Lord Jesus, you open our hearts and minds and all of them who are present here, you fill their hearts and help them also to understand everything, Lord Jesus, and help us to implement in a future ministry, Lord. Lord Jesus, we need your guidance and concern, Lord. Asking in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Susan Nirmal. Um, so on Wednesday, we began looking at the developmental needs of children. Uh, we'll first look at the developmental needs of children that are common to uh, all age groups. And then we will look uh, at um, the specific developmental needs of children in specific age groups. So uh, we began looking at, uh, uh, you know, the, the common developmental needs in all children. The first one is um, the need for physical activity. The second one uh, we saw was uh, the need for competence and uh, achievement. Uh, the third one uh, we stopped here. We looked at uh, the first two. And uh, the third one is the need for uh, self-definition. Now, you know, children and all age groups, uh, they grow, so they need lots of opportunities uh, to explore who they are, to explore what their talents are, their gifts are, their capabilities, um, uh, to also know what they are becoming, who they are becoming, and how they can relate to the world around them, especially the, the younger ones, the older ones as well. You know, they're learning how to relate uh, uh, to the world around them, apart from their family, which they have been very uh, closely connected to in the very formative years of their um, learning. But now they are, you know, stepping out, they are growing. Um, so they, are, uh, they need opportunities to explore who they are, to explore what they are becoming, uh, and how to relate to the world around them. So they're basically looking for a self-definition. Uh, they're looking for... Um, uh, a self identity. Uh, they base. They're building their self image. Who they are. Uh, what they look like. To just accept and love themselves with their strengths, their weaknesses. Uh, a whole lot of questions, especially for those who are uh, in the adolescent stage, the teenage stage, when they are transitioning from being children to uh, teens, uh, which is a very important uh, formative uh, time of their uh, period of their life. You know, uh, self-image, valuing themselves, who they are, uh, is kind of a primary challenge for uh, children in all age groups, especially for those who are in this uh, uh, transition stage from, you know, being going from uh, childhood years to teenage adolescent years. So it's important that, you know, we build their identity on the truth uh, in God's word, uh, important to help them to know who they are in Christ. So it's important to build their identity in Christ. Um, that is just, you know, sharing with them uh, uh, various narratives in the Bible, the truths, what the Bible talks about them, who they are in Christ, what Christ has done for them, uh, who they are, uh, you know, uh, 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 as sinners, but who they are now uh, as being part in uh, of the family of Christ, of being uh, sons and daughters of uh, uh, Jesus Christ, being uh, heirs uh, of God, co-heirs with Jesus Christ, just, you know, teaching them this, uh, will kind of build a, a, a good, strong foundation of their self-identity. They'll begin to value themselves not on uh, their capabilities, their talents, how much they can do, 
uh, you know, of what the world presents to them. Uh, but just knowing who they are in Christ will help them to, uh, you know, to achieve things um, uh, in the world and also uh, for the kingdom of um, God. So, you know, it's good to teach them about uh, the course on who we are in Christ very basically uh, from a very young age. Uh, also for, uh, you know, children, uh, for uh, uh, teens, pre-teens and teens, especially uh, those in uh, grade, I think and now it can be as early as grade 6, grade 6 to grade 10, you know, have, uh, uh, they go through a lot of uh, challenges as pre-teens, as, uh, you know, adolescents, as teenagers. So good to have uh, sessions for them, you know, uh, teen sessions. We have teen sessions for our uh, 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 teenagers at uh, All People's Children's Church where you know, we just talk about the various challenges that they're going through, um, how to relate to their peers, how to face peer pressure, uh, you know, uh, how to relate to their family, their parents, the world around, the choices that they make, uh, basically also how to define themselves, to love and accept themselves, to value themselves. So important to you know, uh, build a good, healthy self-image based on the word of God and what God thinks of them and what who God has defined them uh, to be. And also it will help them to find their own purpose, their identity in, uh, you know, the kingdom of God, in, uh, uh, you know, just pursuing the plan and the purpose that God has uh, for their life. So good to even uh, bring this about at a very young age that you know, God has a plan and a purpose for them and how you can uh, they can identify God's plan and purpose, um, how the Holy Spirit will lead them, guide them, just enable them and help them so that they can choose the subjects, they know what they are good at, uh, how they can build on those things and uh, just basically have a very good healthy self-image and self-value based on uh, how God sees them and how God values them. The next one is uh, the need for uh, uh, creative uh, expression. You know, uh, children's bodies and their minds uh, are rapidly growing, changing, uh, and, uh, you know, they slowly uh, uh, learn to get more involved in the world around them just beyond their home, their family. Uh, so we need to create uh, good opportunities, uh, creative opportunities in children's church, in Sunday school uh, that are essential for their development. Uh, you know, these opportunities uh, just can help children, uh, help them to understand and accept themselves, uh, even as they learn how to speak, write, uh, do craft, sing, dance, drama you know, uh, just look at various uh, visual arts that they can express their uh, their feelings, their interests, their thoughts, their talents, uh, and their abilities. So it's good to give them various opportunities in children's church, you know, uh, through all of these things, uh, just speaking, writing, singing, uh, dancing, drama, visual arts, where they can express their uh, feelings, their interests, uh, their thoughts, their talents, their abilities that God has um, blessed them with. So there's various opportunities that you can do, you know, like when uh, you can have uh, talent competitions for them. Uh, we have that during kids conference. You can have it even during, uh, you can plan to have it during the course of uh, the year for uh, your children's church. Um, also have various clubs. You know, we I, I shared about the Kingdom Builders Club that we had uh, in our children's church uh, where we had uh, you know children join uh, 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 um, various clubs and they were taught how to enhance their skills uh, uh, you know and imp improvise on their talents that God has given them in that specific area but also specifically how they can uh, you know, uh, release the supernatural, how they can use this gift uh, to bless uh, the, the people of God, um, you know, uh, to build the kingdom of God. Also get them to participate in adult church activities, uh, you know, sometimes lead worship, sometimes uh, lead in the declaration, uh, you know, just sing a song or do a skit. Uh, you know, uh, Christmas time is also a good time where, uh, you know, you can, or Easter time, uh, just get them to do a skit, not just the, 
usual Christmas narrative, but you know something that is more exciting for them, something that they can learn. Uh, and I, I mentioned a few of those things that we did uh, uh, in the last class. You know, just get the children to, uh, you know, involve, get them to plan, get them to think, get them to write out the skit, what they want to do, what song they want to sing. And you can just, you'll just be amazed with the talent and how they would, uh, you know, just present God's word, uh, present the topic that you're giving to them. It also just helps them to, uh, you know, uh, identify their talents, uh, also helps them to, uh, you know, uh, uh, grow in that, uh, value themselves, get excited about what they are doing and also makes, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 in a place where they are in a creative expression, they're able to just express their own feelings, uh, their own interests and their talents and just to feel loved, accepted, appreciated, uh, which all children want, which all children uh, look forward for. The next one is, um, just a minute, the need for a uh, positive social in interaction. You know, uh, children uh, uh, in the very formative years of their life, they're basically relating more with their family, uh, which is of, you know, Im primary importance for a child. Uh, but, you know, they all need a, a opportunities to express uh, their, uh, you know, their relationships, their positive relationship with people outside the family, outside the home, uh, which is basically in the school with their classmates, with their close, uh, you know, group of friends or just a, a, a close friend that they have with the teachers. Uh, so also in, in children's church or in Sunday school, you know, uh, they're looking for opportunities where they, uh, you know, they, uh, they want to uh, experience positive uh, relationships with uh, uh, the people in their class, the other children in their class, and also with the uh, teachers. So, you know, these basically these positive uh, relationships uh, just provide kind of comfort, support, uh, security uh, for them, even as they uh, experience new ideas, they are viewing uh, things outside the family, outside the home, they're looking at the world, uh, you know, they're, they're observing the people of the world, uh, they're learning their values, they're learning to uh, express their feelings. Sometimes children feel very, um, you know, scared to express their feelings at home uh, because of a very dominant uh, uh, parent uh, or maybe a very strict parent or also maybe because you know the parents are not having a good positive relationship uh, uh, the husband and wife uh, the father and mother not having a good close relationship uh, there's kind of strife there's fighting um, there's discord uh, so the child is feeling very uh, uncomfortable uh, feeling very insecure uh, feeling very scared so when the child is you know coming out in the world uh, the child needs a positive social interaction. So, you know, children's church can be a best place where uh, a child knows that, you know, it's a place where uh, they can feel loved and accepted. And also it's a place where they can experience uh, God's love. So they experience God's love in and through uh, us. So uh, very important to uh, understand uh, what the child is going through. So if a child is not uh, speaking up, if a child looks lost, if a child looks worried, anxious, if a ch the child is giving you little hints in their behavior, you know, it's all uh, uh, things that we can catch on, speak to the child, uh, you know, just show love, show acceptance, help the child, because many of them come from uh, broken families. Many of them come from single, uh, uh, where they have single parents, uh, and or maybe their parents are fighting at home or parents don't have time basically because both the parents, uh, the father and the mother are working. They're left to um, the care of, uh, you know, uh, uh, maids or uh, uh, they're put in a play school for, you know, extended periods of time till their parents come back from work and pick them up. Uh, so they feel very insecure. They don't feel loved and accepted. So it's uh, important that we create this kind of atmosphere of love, acceptance, 
so that they would know that church is a place where they can feel loved, accepted. It's a place where uh, they can meet with God. They can experience uh, God's love and it will become a place of positive social interaction. And that would kind of have a lasting impact on children uh, for the rest of their uh, on the rest of their lives. So, you know, build, a, a, a create a, a, a experiences for them opportunities for them where they can you know have play games together or interact uh, in group sessions just group discussion or do a skit together or uh, do you know craft work activities uh, just to build a relationship with um, uh, the children in the class make friends also you know when you put them in clubs uh, different clubs where they have uh, different interests uh, they're learning to relate with children of all age groups they also uh, are able to learn from each other's talents uh, so it builds a better bond with children of all age groups they learn they build friendships also important to have mentoring sessions nowadays i think this is really very very important uh, in in children's church to have a one on one mentoring session with um, the child and the teacher so the teacher can you know really um, speak into the child's life i mean when we, we speak we you know we generally teaching them truths in god's word but one on one just to speak uh, just to declare god's word over their life decree things uh, uh prophesy over them give them words of wisdom and knowledge um uh, that you know uh, will have a lasting uh, impact uh, on their lives uh, i just uh, can share one i'll just share one incident uh, you know uh, one sunday i was uh, you know i always pray and ask god uh, god this sunday i just want to impact one child's life uh, give me something some word of wisdom knowledge prophecy that i can speak over a child i can just share with them uh, so that they just know that uh, you know uh, that you speak that they can hear you um also that you know uh that we are interested in their lives that we want to speak into their lives so remember just uh, telling uh, a child you know she was i think in grade seven or grade eight uh, 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 uh comes from a single parenting home uh, i just told her you know uh, god uh knows what you're going through he's he's seeing uh what you're going through but he's just telling you that i love you uh with an everlasting a fatherly love um and that you know you can just trust and hold on to god and i just said that and you know she just uh you know she just started weeping and crying she didn't bother it was uh you know it was in the adult church everybody were there uh, people noticing her but she just she just couldn't control herself i mean i just felt so uh burdened for that child i just felt so sad but uh, I was just so glad that, you know, uh, uh, I could just speak this into her life because I never knew what she was going through. God knew, the Holy Spirit knew, uh, but just that kind of brought such a release of uh, emotions in her heart. It just cried in, you know, just pouring out her heart and crying. Her, her mother and sister were observing that and they were very worried. And later on, they sent one of the their close family friends just to ask what happened you know, uh, and I just said she was just uh, unburdening herself. That's all I said. Uh, but it was just, uh, you know, so, so we can do that. You know, uh, God is interested in these children's life. Uh, he He reveals. Uh, we used to do that as teachers, you know, just pray for these children. It's amazing what God reveals to us about their lives. And when we share it to them, you know, uh, it just builds closer bonds uh, with them just to know that somebody cares, uh, that God knows he cares, he wants to work with them, he is helping them out uh, and he uh, uh, loves them. So uh, that's a good thing uh, to do as well, just to hear from God and speak into uh, children's lives. Uh, Charles says positive social in interaction can... <clears throat> Sorry, uh, Charles uh, says that positive social interaction can include barrier breaking games. Yes, it can include uh, barrier breaking games. Uh, it can in include uh, icebreakers as well. Uh, it can also include games where you have a, a, a general game time with children of all age groups. 
so children are learning to accommodate other children of younger you know the younger ones and also the young ones are learning to play with the older ones it, it just uh, uh, it helps in positive social interaction yes any questions so far before we move on to the the next developmental need of children of all age groups okay there are no questions uh, the next uh, is the need for structured and clear limits you know uh, even as children grow uh, in their need for uh, 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 children are growing up you know all children of all age groups not just basically teenagers who are looking for uh, freedom uh, all children in all age groups uh, want some kind of independence and freedom uh, even the smaller ones you know, um, and they also, but they also, even in that, that whole environment of their, them wanting their own independence, their freedom of doing things in a certain way, it's important uh, that, you know, uh, we all, they, uh, it's important because they also need uh, a security, a structure where they feel secure and, uh, you know, uh, where there are clear limits that are presented to them or uh, that is given to them so that it will help them to develop their skills uh, such as being responsible, uh, you know, uh, their, uh, expressing their creativity, uh, being, being trustworthy uh, and dependable. So uh, sometimes we think, you know, in, in children's church, we shouldn't bring in uh, a, a so-called law and order. Uh, we shouldn't have any kind of... Uh, uh, you know, discipline, uh, just let children be, let children enjoy themselves, let them do what they, it's an, I think it's a, it's a good place to teach them uh, that even in the house of God, uh, uh, house of God, we, when we talk about the house of God, we talk about the house of God being a family. So in the family, when there is certain restrictions, certain disciplines that is uh, placed, it's important for them to know that, uh, you know, that is also applicable in the house of God. Uh, why do I say this? Because, you know, uh, uh, if you look at uh, our adults, you know, uh, it's okay for them uh, 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 not to come to church with a Bible, but it's not okay for them to send their children without their textbooks to school, or it's not okay for them uh, to go to their office without carrying the required files. Nowadays, we have our laptops uh, to carry our laptops to office. We do carry our laptops to office, even though it's very heavy. It kind of, uh, you know, burdens us to carry it. But it's okay for us, you know, uh, if we don't uh, carry our Bibles to, uh, to, to church, you know, why carry it, you know, uh, just use our uh, phones. It's easy to slip our phones in our in our pockets, in our uh, in our bags, then carry a Bible. Uh, it's okay for us not to go to office late, to send our children late to school or to go to uh, a show or a movie uh, late or to go to the railway station or uh, to catch a bus or a, a flight. No, we don't dare to go late, but it's okay for us to go uh, late to church. You know, uh, and why is that? Because in children's church, we basically taught children it's okay. You know, uh, we don't have these kind of rules and restrictions. It's okay with God. But I think it's so much important for them to learn that in the house of God, our God is a God of order and discipline. And it is uh, important that we come to church on time it's important that we carry our bibles it's important the way we dress because when we have certain dress codes in school certain dress codes at the workplace uh, when we go some places you know we have certain dress code it's important that we dress in a way because we're going to worship the king of kings we're going to meet the king of kings uh, so all of these things i think is is good to teach children at a very young age because that will kind of bring in that discipline uh, later on uh, 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 you know even as they grow up and they'll think it's uh, you know it's it, it's not okay to do this in church you know uh, it's okay, uh, you know, uh, if we um, 
don't go to church on Sunday. We can, you know, plan a long weekend, go out, but we come back, ensure that we come back on San Sunday evening so that our children don't miss school on Monday and we don't get, you no, know, we don't miss work on Monday mornings. But it's okay for us to plan a weekend where we can miss church on a Sunday because now things are so much more easier. We have it all online. But uh, uh, important for us to, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, build these uh, security uh, structures where they feel secure enough to obey these uh, laws and also put clear limits so that, you know, they are uh, learning responsibility, creativity, uh, being trustworthy and dependable within those laws. And our God is a God of laws, right? The Old Testament, there are uh, so many laws that he has given, uh, which is applicable even for us today. Uh, so you know, some of the things that we can have um, some kind of structure is that they need to carry their Bibles, learn their memory verse, uh, you know, uh, read the scripture portions that you are giving to them. Uh, because, you know, uh, children uh, 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 would not dare to go to school without doing their homework. Uh, but it's okay for them you know that the teacher won't say anything if I don't learn my memory verse, I don't read my scripture portions. Uh, but, you know, we need to impress upon them that, hey, this is important. You know, we need to learn. This is a good time for us to um, learn. Also, you know, for them to act upon what they have learned, how they can apply what they have learned uh, in the week, uh, and then come back on Sunday and share that experience. So we basically have a notebook now that... <coughs> Sorry, uh, we have a notebook where they write down how they're going to apply what they have learned. And then, you know, uh, before we used to give them printed workbooks, but they are kind of bored with that. So we change it to just them carrying their own uh, journals or their notebooks and then writing down how they uh, practice what they learn during the week and come back and uh, share uh, with the teacher, share with the uh, class. It just... Uh, you know, helps other children to also learn to see how others have put into uh, practice what they have um, learned, experience uh, uh, what they are learning from God's word. And so that becomes kind of a lifestyle. So even when they grow, come to adult church, when they're listening to the sermon, they go back and they know they have to apply it because that's kind of become a lifestyle. That's kind of become a structure, a habit in their lives. So we're not saying that becomes a ritual. Uh, it becomes more of a habit, which is a good, healthy habit, which, you know, God wants us to uh, practice what we, uh, he's teaching us, what we are learning from um, God's word. Okay. The last thing is um, the need for a strong attachment with the positive adults, uh, you know, um, all children of all age groups need the skills to establish strong attachment with at least one uh, positive adult in their life, uh, you know, so that, uh, you know, they can, whether it's at home uh, or whether it's uh, in school or whether it's in church, so that, you know, when times of difficulties, uh, uh, when they're facing any challenges, they can bounce back, they can fall back. Uh, you know, because they have the strong attachments with at least one positive caring adult in their life. So, you know, as a children's church teacher, you can be that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that caring, positive um, adult who, uh, they, who, who they have a strong relationship with so that, you know, they can fall back, come back, they can call you, they can share, and uh, they know that, you know, uh, you're not somebody who would judge them, uh, uh, condemn them, but somebody who uh, was there to help them through difficult times. And even when they grow up and they do something that, uh, you know, can be really terrible or something that is uh, uh, really, that has broken God's heart, you know, you are there, they can come back to you, they can fall back to you and that you can lead them back to God uh, and how they can, um, you know, change their ways, uh, make the right choices um, and get back in their relationship with God. So these are uh, these uh, seven points, which are uh, basically uh, the developmental needs that are common to all age groups. Um, before we look at the developmental needs of specific uh, age groups, uh, and does anyone have any questions, anything you'd like to share, any comments, anything?
no thoughts, no comments, no questions. Uh, even as I'm sharing these things, you know, uh, in the context of uh, uh, children's church, this can apply also to those of you who are parents, uh, have children, uh, just can help them uh, even uh, whatever age group they are with their developmental needs. Yes, say. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing this. Um, so my question is, um, um I, i'm going to give like the um kids in terms of um their makeup or would i say um their behavioral um characteristics let me put it that way for lack of a better word in terms of the fact that how do we navigate all these developmental needs uh with kids who are introverts and kids who are extroverts uh with kids who might be um melancholy or they could be choleric or they could be um those four uh, behavioral patterns basically and then um i can't remember the other two and uh just basically how do you navigate all these things to ensure that one doesn't feel left out and the other one feels like they are treated well because you have a lot of children come to class or as parents we have kids who are always going to be different how then do we navigate all these needs to ensure that we are meeting each one because there's another aspect of uh the five language club languages some of these kids prefer timeouts quality time service you know they some kids like to be touched pat on the back how do we navigate all these needs basically to ensure that at the end of the day we're able to cut across every one of them um in meeting their needs i, I don't know if my question is clear or if it makes no, I, sense. I understand your uh, question it's a good question say uh, Thank you, but we, uh, we are going to do the learning styles of children after we do the development needs of children we're going to look at the learning styles uh, just like you uh, spoke about the five la uh, love languages, uh, the, uh, different children have different learning styles, uh, how we can incorporate uh, the different learning styles with the needs of children, even as we're just teaching them for 45 minutes or one hour, uh, and how to prepare a lesson and how to interact with them based on their specific uh, learning styles. We'll do that after we look at the development needs of children. So can you wait till then? Is that okay, yeah. say? Yes, uh, Pastor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. But a good question. Thank you. Um, yes, Rupa, you have your hand raised up. Ma'am, I just wanted to share while you are um, sharing about the children and the parents not giving importance to the coming to the Sunday school or Sunday service and planning on that day. Hello, can you yes, hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, go ahead, Rupa, I can hear you. Yes. I was also having the same burden for the last few, uh, many days. So God uh, has uh, revealed and I uh, started teaching on uh, life of Timothy to the church. How his mother, he was a uh, disip disciple even before uh, Paul found him. Mm -hmm. So... It was the mother and his grandmother who have nurtured and instilled that value system in that child to honor. Timothy is honoring God. So he had learned to honor God's word. He learned to love God and follow him as his disciple. So unless as parents we recognize and give that first place and honor to God, children will not learn. And uh, just wanted to, this generation, uh, many, I, I don't say all, but many are taking it very light. They give so much importance to education and other things. But it comes to educating their children, the values of Christ, uh, the value system of God, they are failing. So I, it was what God taught me. And thank you, ma'am. I just wanted to share because it is also something which is burning in my heart. Thank yes, you. thank you for sharing, Rupa. Uh, I think, you know, uh, we've heard uh, uh, parents say that 
you know, they come to church because their child didn't want to miss children's church. So they were forced to come to church. They were not planning, but they were forced to come to children's church because their, ch their child just loves to come to children's church. So I think if uh, we make children's church a place where a child feels loved, accepted, it's uh, a, a good learning experience for them. Uh, you know, uh, they will just tag along their parents along, they'll pull them, they'll ensure that uh, parents have also told me, you know, oh my gosh, I uh, my child ensures that we don't get late to children's church, just pulls all of us together so that we can come to church on time. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, so children can also in the other way make an impact, uh, depends on how we impact their lives in, in children's church. They can in turn impact uh, their family as well. Yes, so children can have far-reaching uh, results in impacting uh, their, uh, their their parents, especially. That's why if you look at advertisements, you know, uh, many advertisements they have, they use children. Why? Because uh, children kind of impact even what their parents buy. You know, uh, they force their children, they post their parents, they have kind of a sway on what their parents uh, buy. Uh, for the home as well. So if you look at all the ads uh, very creatively, you know, they uh, they kind of uh, tempt children. So, you know, if you if you buy this, you'll get this. Uh, if you buy the sweet, you'll have the sticker or you'll get this pencil. And so the child forces their parents to get that chocolate or uh, that uh, candy for them, whatever. <laughs> I mean, even if, if it comes to refrigerators, uh, TV, whatever, influence their parents so yes you can make a great impact on them so that they can influence uh, their parents uh, as well even in times of uh, you know having family prayer uh, how to have family prayer and all of those things children can make a great impact and influence uh, on their parents yes thank you for sharing Rupa yes Charles thank you pastor um <clears throat> I have a sharing on um on the effect of the children on parents. Um, before I joined Child Evangelism Fellowship, I was serving with Awana. Awana is also a children's ministry called Approved yes. Workmen and Not Ashamed. And uh, this child uh, was told to bring, there is a time we were telling them to come with their parents because we had an open day where parents were supposed to be coming. And when the parent came, she was told to come on Sunday also to attend church. So she came. Later, she became a church member. She got baptized, and she became a church minister. Then there is another place where uh, we had a children's meeting. It's called Good News Club. And uh, after a while, like 12 months, the parents said, why don't you begin a church here? Because we don't have any church, you can begin a church. Talk to the church administration, we begin a church. So a church began, and the children were able again to be attending that particular church where they, they were having a meeting. So children are very, very influential. They can help even in the church even in the spiritual development of their parents. I submit. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you for sharing. Uh, wonderful work that you're doing. Praise God and God bless. Uh, continue to use you among children. Okay. Uh, thank you all for sharing your thoughts. Thank you, Asha and, Ru and uh, Kung as well. Um, anyone else has uh, any questions? Or we can move on to the developmental needs of children. Uh, in specifying, uh, looking at developmental needs of children, specific age groups, basically uh, three to four years old. We'll begin with that. Okay. Okay. So, if you know questions, no further questions or comments, uh, anyone wants to share anything, we look at the developmental needs of children, uh, ages three and uh, four. Okay. So children in this uh, age group uh, basically are learning how to relate uh, to their family, uh, you know, uh, and to people outside their family. Uh, they're also learning uh, to separate uh, themselves from their family members uh, for short periods of time. Uh, so, you know, if you're having a preschool uh, 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 
uh, arrangement for children uh, at your children's church, then you need to know that, uh, you know, uh, this is a time where uh, for this age group specifically, it has to be very, very uh, short. Uh, in the beginning few weeks, it will be good if um, at least one parent comes and sits with the child so they get familiar with the surroundings, with other children, with the teachers, uh, with the other parents. Um, and also, if you know, uh, ensure that uh, um, you know after some time, when the parents feel that uh, they can leave their their children and sit in adult church, that they are in a place where you can uh, you know catch them, uh, because if the child suddenly feels insecure, wants to see their parent, uh, then you know where exactly to take them uh, 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 during service, um, so that the child is not uh, you know. Uh, feeling insecure, feeling afraid, uh, begins to cry. And then, you know, that kind of experience uh, leaves a bad taste for the child and the child will not want to come back to children's church. So good to, you know, uh, make this uh, arrangements because uh, they're learning basically to separate themselves from their family members. Uh, and that's only for a short period of uh, uh, time. They're learning to tell stories on their own, uh, but it's not more than one sentence or thought. Uh, uh, I'll explain this later. Let's put down the next slide. Okay. Um, they're also learning uh, numbers in sequence. They're learning how to count small objects. Um, so if you give them a lot of colors and then, uh, you know, uh, crayons and you say, hey, there were uh, 25 of them, uh, but uh, let's count. They won't be able to count uh, if you, and you want to put everything in the box. So that's not something that they will really be able to do. Uh, you know, they're learning numbers in sequence. Uh, they're learning how to count small objects. So if you're having uh, games or activity, just keep uh, the counting very minimal. Uh, they're also learning alphabets and simple songs, so you can teach them uh, simple action songs which they uh, would like to sing and uh, learn. Don't teach them big songs. Don't teach them two, three verses, you know, the same time. Just a few lines uh, which they will be able to learn and uh, sing. They're also learning, uh, you know, to perfect their large motor skills, specifically, you know, uh, using their legs and upper arms. So, you know, running, jumping, climbing, standing on one foot, balancing. Um, okay. Uh, you know, walking up and down the stairs, uh, dancing, hopping, marching, kicking a ball, throwing a ball. Uh, so basically, you know, these are some things that they're learning. So uh, it'll be very challenging if you have, uh, you know, the classroom for these children on the third or fourth floor because they will find it difficult to climb up. So it's good to have it on the ground floor or, you know, max keep it at, uh, you know, the first floor because they're not uh, very, very confident in uh, climbing. They need a lot of help. A lot of time will go in that. If you're planning games, you know, uh, just keep it uh, uh, simple for them because they're learning to perfect their large motor skills. They're also developing to use uh, their fine motor skills using their hands and fingers. Uh, so working with clay, uh, they can clap their hands so you can... You know, during singing, you can get them to, uh, during singing, you can uh, get them to clap their hands. You know, if you're having games, uh, you can get them to pick up small objects. So if you want them to, you know, they basically uh, scatter everything around. So you can get them to pick up all their uh, things, put it in the box, uh, you know, help you clear the room because they just love helping you. Uh, they also love to color, but it's not very organized because it's very early coloring. So they'll not have a proper concept of the right colors to use. You need to help them with that. Uh, also to color within the lines, within the structure. So give them a simple coloring so that it will be easy for them. They also, uh, you know, uh, use their hands to work with clay, uh, you know, finger painting, uh, uh, and also, you know, they, they are learning to write, so don't give them uh, uh, to write their memory verse down because that will take eternity for you. You know, just give them a printed uh, sheet with uh, uh, 
uh, you know, or the coloring sheet on top, they can have the memory verse, which should be easy for them. Uh, they like uh, songs with hand and finger motions that, that they learn to do quickly. So you can really teach them a lot of action songs, a good uh, uh, age to teach them action songs. Uh, it's very early for them also to work with scissors and glue. Uh, they, if you're doing that, they need a lot of supervision because they can spill the glue. They can put excessive glue on the, on the, on the, on the paper. Uh, they can't cut right. So all of these initial cutting, sticking, everything, uh, for the craft activity has will be have to be done by the teachers and just basic simple things that you know that the child can do like uh, just coloring on that or basically you know uh, just tying a ribbon or something uh, which with the help of the teachers that they can uh, do okay uh, children in this age group also uh, uh, you know enjoy uh, these type of play they like to pretend they imagine a lot of things uh, they do a lot of pretend play, uh, like they like they are the teacher and they're teaching. Uh, you know, uh, 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 they have a lot of magical thinking and fantasies. Uh, so it's, it's good to teach them about creation because they can just imagine things. Uh, when you tell them a, a narrative, you know, the way that you enact it or narrate it to them, you know, just make it so imaginative because they imagine things. They love. Uh, they even fantasize a lot of things. Uh, you know, they like to play in uh, important, it's very important, they like to play in groups of two or three uh, with the children of their own age. So if you uh, if you get them to sit in a bigger group and color, they would not like it, but they will kind of move out from that big group and get into their small cliques of two and three, you know, uh, uh, which they will like to color with them or even games. Uh, keep the games very, very short and minimal because they don't like group games. They like to just play with two or children, two or three children in their own uh, age. So playing games with a larger group uh, of children, uh, you know, you can have that only for a short period of time. But uh, for this age group, they just like to play with one or two children or maximum uh, three children. Okay. About uh, hearing Bible stories. Uh, Sorry. Okay, uh, hearing and understanding Bible stories, uh, they're able to listen and understand uh, the Bible stories, Bible narratives, but it has to be very, very short because their attention span is very little, very short, uh, maximum eight eight minutes eight to ten minutes so don't uh, uh, give them a lot of details just keep it very short uh, make it very imaginative exciting uh, narrated with a lot of actions voice uh, voice modulation eye contact uh, you know uh, uh, doing a lot of drama which uh, children in this age will really uh, love they're also able to uh, if you tell them okay you know uh, can you tell me what you learned today? Um, can somebody tell me the whole story? One child will not be able to narrate the whole story because like I uh, uh, just said some time back, you know, they're learning to uh, tell their own stories, but will just be maximum one sentence or just a thought. So you can't expect them to repeat the entire story. They can... Uh, just tell you the main character of the, the story, the main person that they learn about Abraham or Sarah or uh, Bartimaeus or Zacchaeus or David, Goliath, uh, you know, and they can just say, okay, David killed Goliath or uh, Zacchaeus became a good man, whatever. So, you know, just short things. So don't expect them to narrate or, uh, you know, uh, retell the entire story to you. Uh, they can repeat a few main points in the story, but that will just uh, not be in sequential order uh, as and when they remember things, they can just say things, but you know, uh, just to uh, reiterate the story, what you've taught them or uh, to, uh, you know, bring back to memory, you can get different children to, um, you know, uh, say what they have understood, what they learned, what they heard, and then you can kind of uh, bring about a reiteration of the whole story or the narrative that you uh, taught them, okay? Uh, we just have one more minute, so we'll uh, stop here. Uh, anyone has any questions?
we look at uh, the mental, the social, the spiritual, and the physical needs, and how to effectively teach these uh, children in this age group um, on Wednesday. Okay, anyone has any questions, any thoughts, anything that you'd like to share? No? Okay, uh, I haven't posted these uh, notes um, in the, uh, on the screen page. I'll uh, do this uh, by this afternoon so that you can access uh, the notes. So all of this, I will give it to you, all the development needs of uh, children of different age groups, and that is common to everyone. I'll post it on the screen page. Okay, thank you, everyone, for um, joining class. Uh, I'll see you soon for our class on First Timothy. Thank you.